Well, good morning. I hope you had an absolutely amazing Christmas birthday party for Jesus. I hope somehow you found a way, whether it was even through Zoom or jumping online or FaceTime or physically gathering, to just also allow it to be a special time with your family. I know it was for ours for sure. Today, we're going to have a little bit of a different service. So I'm going to ask you, man, we're going to do two, two quick songs and then three amazing little pieces that sort of help us wind down 2020 and walk into 2021 together as a family. And we're going to have a big chunk of time with an activity for you to do when we finish. And so you may not want your kids to run too far today because we're just doing two quick songs together and then we are going to run right into some really cool stuff where it's just kind of based between you guys and us and an interaction back and forth. So let's stand up together and let's just enjoy singing and worshiping and lifting our hearts in praise together. Here we go. Look at the person next to you. Just say, you're a child of God.
Father, we're so grateful that we can come to you hungry and you are a God who can satisfy. We can come to you empty. But your love never runs dry. That regardless of what we're experiencing, we can come to you, Father. We can come to you broken and your arms are open wide. We can come to you weary and literally your touch, the breath of your Holy Spirit can restore our life. And so, Father, we give you thanks. Thank you for the season we had of Advent where we walked through a reminder of your first coming and what the many of the characters were experiencing. And Father, we walk into 2021 in our own season of Advent waiting on that glorious day that you will return just as you promised. God, we love you and we thank you in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We hope you had a great Christmas. And as I think about Christmas, I don't know how it happens in your family. This is kind of how it happens in our family. We get together, everybody's sitting in a circle, and they've got all these gifts, and our kids usually like pass them out. We go youngest to oldest, and they all unwrap, and you're sitting there with all these gifts, and you know, everybody's like, yay, oh, this is awesome. Everybody's got their gifts. They're like, oh, this is cool. But you can't really play with them until everybody's done, because then it's not really appropriate. So, okay, now everybody's done. Okay, we pick up all the trash. Now you kind of look at your toys, and like, okay, cool look at whatever you got, your gift, everybody plays with them. And eventually, you know, you go and look at everybody else's gifts and it kind of winds down. And then you're like, okay, we kind of take our stuff back to our room or whatever. And now it's like, okay, Christmas is over. And you feel this sense of like, oh, okay, I'm going to like take out my new watch or take out this toy that I got. And like, oh, this is really cool. I'm going to do this. But you feel this sense of like, okay, cool. I, hopefully you got everything you want. You feel the sense of contentment. And it's like, oh, okay, this is awesome. But then after that, the day after Christmas, I want to ask you this, what is it that you're still longing for? What is it that you're still searching for right now? Maybe you got every gift that you wanted, but what is it that you're still searching for? Maybe it's a dream job. Maybe it's a dream date. Maybe it's an incredible opportunity. Maybe it's a trip of a lifetime that, you, that you've always wanted, something that you still want to see happen. For me, I've always had this uh, fascination with this city in Switzerland, it's called Zermatt. As Zermatt, Switzerland is actually this city on the, in the shadow of the Matterhorn, which is the, the most famous of the Swiss Alps. And Zermatt's this little city on the nestled in the shadow of the Matterhorn. And basically, the only way you can get to Zermatt is by train. You take a train up to Zermatt, nestled in the mountains in the snow. And then the only way to go skiing from Zermatt is to get, take the gondola up the mountain. You ski back down to this little mountain where there's no cars, no roads. And you enjoy this incredible, beautiful city nestled in the shadow of the Matterhorn. That's like a total dream of mine. It's like a bucket list thing. If you're like, I have no idea what the Matterhorn is, you can Google it. If you've ever eaten the candy bar, Toblerone, on the candy bar, it has a picture of the Matterhorn. So this is like something I think about. Like we were planning on it. You know, like, oh, we should hide some money away, save some money. I haven't been able to do it yet. Hopefully sometime before I die, I get to go to Zermatt. And hopefully I'll be young enough and able enough to go skiing. That is something I've always wanted to do. What is it that you're wanting to do? What is something you've been longing for? Today, we're going to look at the story that after Jesus is born, okay, the shepherds found out about it, the wise men found out about it, but not everybody knows yet. Jesus' family takes him to the temple, and they're doing some rituals, and there are people there. There's two people that are, come that are going to come across who have been waiting for, praying for, and longing for the coming of the Messiah. They have been longing to see the promised Messiah come in their lifetime. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And so as we have kind of a family engagement time here in just a second, I want you to think about this. What is it that you're still longing for? What's on your bucket list? What's on your bucket list? Uh, also, get your Bibles ready. Abby's going to come in just a minute. We're going to be walking through the lesson. So as we encounter these people, think for yourself, though. What is on your bucket list? And share as a family, what are some things that you would love to do or love to see before you die? And go. Hi, I hope you guys had fun sharing your bucket lists. Um, now we're going to dive into our Bibles, so I hope you grabbed yours. Um, as a family, you're going to open up to Luke chapter 2. 
And you're going to read a big section, and it's about um, when Jesus is brought to the temple by his parents to be dedicated, right? Um, and so it starts in Luke chapter 2, it starts in verse 22, and it goes through 38. So what I'm going to give you a moment to do right now in a family, as your family, is to read that passage together and answer, some, answer five questions. Who's in the story? Where is the story taking place? When is the story taking place? And then answer what's happening and why is it happening? And then I'll bring you back in about four minutes and I'll share some um, thoughts that I have. All right. Well, I hope you had enjoyed doing that with your family. If you didn't answer all the questions, that's okay. I'm going to walk you through some of the things that I discovered while I did this exercise at my house. So first of all, who's in the story? We have Moses, the Old Testament law dude. We have Joseph and Mary, the parents, Jesus, the baby, and we find out he's also the Savior, right? There's Simeon, the old, righteous, devout man. And then there's Anna, who's also old, and she's a prophetess, and she's a widow who lives at the temple, right? Where is this taking place? It's taking place in Jerusalem. And I'm going to show you a map really fast so you can see. Uh-oh. Sorry. My bad. They're going to zoom in here. And here is 
Jerusalem right here. And Bethlehem is just, Bethlehem is just five miles um, south of Jerusalem. So they're only five and a half miles away from where Jesus was born. Okay. Also, where is this taking place? It's taking place in the temple courts. Now we know that Mary and Anna are with, or are in the story. So it has to take place in one of the outer courts, which are like the, the court of the Gentiles or the court or the women's court, right? Because they weren't allowed in the inner courts. And then the next question was when, when is this taking place? Well, it's taking place during the time of purification rites for Jesus, which would be in um, a Jewish baby that would be about 40 days old. So in the story of our um, Jesus's birth, birth story, this would be between his birth in Bethlehem and when the Magi come to visit him, okay? Um, and now I'm going to do what and why, kind of intertwined, okay? So what's happening? Well, first we have Mary and Joseph. What's happening to them? They are presenting Jesus to the Lord. And why are they doing that? To fulfill the, the law of Moses, right? And they are also sacrifice, bringing their sacrifice um, according to the law. And they're bringing either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, which shows us that they aren't a really wealthy family because a wealthy family would be bringing a lamb for sacrifice. And then there's Simeon. What is Simeon doing? Well, Simeon, it says that he's waiting for consultation of Israel. What does that mean? Well, I looked it up for you. It means consultation of Israel was the hope that God would come to rescue and comfort his people. So he was waiting for God to come rescue his people, right? But we also know that he was, that the Holy Spirit was upon him and that the Holy Spirit was talking to him and telling him that he was going to meet this, the, the Messiah before he died, right? And so now Simeon comes and he holds, he sees Jesus and he picks him up and he holds him and he blesses him and he speaks this prophecy over him and speaks from the Holy Spirit, right? And why does he do that? He does it because... Um, it wasn't just happenstance because he was a devout man. And some people might even think that he might've been a priest, but he wasn't there on duty that day. He wasn't working. He was there because the Holy Spirit prompted him to walk into that temple and to meet the Messiah, right? Um, and then there's Anna. Anna, what was she doing? Well, she was fasting and worshiping because that's what it says she does every day and every night, right? Um, and she also sees Jesus and recognizes him as the um, the redeemer, right? And why, why is she fasting and praying and living in the temple? Um, she's fasting and praying to show her devotion to the Lord, right? And why is she living in the temple? It says, because when she became a widow, she went and devoted herself to living in that temple. But that shows us a glimpse that the, that she had lived there for so long that the people that were coming to the temple would be familiar with her and respect her because they had seen her all along, right? So that gives, um, value to what she's about to say, right? About Jesus. Now, why is it important that there's Simeon and Anna that, that recognize Jesus as the Messiah? This is the cool why that I came up with. That Why is this in the Bible? Why is God putting it there? Because Simeon and Anna both spoke truth into Mary and Joseph's life to validate for, his, for Jesus' parents that he really was God's son, right? And the Savior for the Jews. But also not just for the Jews, but for all nations. That's what Simeon says. It's for all nations, right? And... Um, Simeon spoke in private, but Anna spoke in public so that everyone at the temple would be able to hear what she was saying about this redeemer. And the fact that there's two of them, says, it shows the val validity of um, that the testimony of two witnesses is truth, right? And so um, it was true. It was an, um, an important time in Jesus' life, in the life of his parents, in the life of those that were at the temple, and in the, the life of the Jews and the Gentiles of the old of the new testament but also it's important for us to remember that it is it's true for us because we get to see this story played out in our lives too i mean thanks thanks abby thanks greg man what a what a bucket list to get a chance to go to switzerland to some little village like that it's gorgeous we've seen some pictures of it as we sat at dinner the other night together and you were sharing that but think about simeon's bucket list you're going to get to see and bless the messiah Talk about a bucket list and waiting on an opportunity. This guy's been promised for years and years. And you're thinking to yourself, hey, I've been told that I'm going to get a chance to do that. And he's going to come in my lifetime. What a, what a bucket list. Abby shares these two really incredible stories that, that show Mary and Joseph and, and Simeon and Anna and, and Mary and Joseph walking through this, this process of obedience to the Levitical laws of their time. 
a, a, a baby boy was typically circumcised at home at about one week of, of age. We watch them in this part of the story going through that ceremonial process according to the Levitical law, right? In Leviticus chapter 12, verse 3, we see that. And then, and then we see the ceremony of purification, about 40 days, just as Abby said. They would take a male child to the temple. They would have a purification ceremony for the mother. And then in Levitical law, Right there in Leviticus chapter 12, it says that the firstborn males were given as an honor to God. They were sort of recognized, hey, this child God really belongs to you. And so we ask, why, why is that important for us? I think there's a, a step of obedience here that's really important. And I don't know about you, but there are so many times that I get this sense that God is asking us to do something. And it's hard sometimes to say, yes, Lord to just abandon whatever my own personal desires and thoughts and feelings and costs and all those things are, and to just walk in obedience. But we see Mary and Joseph doing that and in the process, fulfilling the prophecy and reminding us that Jesus did not just come from the Jewish people, but all of this was sort of the culmination of God's promise that all people would be blessed as a descendant of Abraham, that Jesus came for us all for all people. As we think about these two stories, what season of life are you walking through right now? Are you in one of those seasons, perhaps like, like Simeon? Man, things are pretty good right now. You, you've been told God by God, hey, he's going to use you this year. You're just kind of sitting around waiting to see what that looks like, how that looks like, and, and you're sort of ready to go, and, and you're sort of sitting around going, all right, God, I'm, I'm good. You're going to do something in me and through me and around me. And, and I got my head on a swivel and, and I'm watching. And when we get to experience it, might it even be so fulfilling that we would look to father and say, okay, God, you can just take me home now because that was as good as it's ever going to get. Maybe we're in a season like Anna. She was a widow. Things weren't always great. I'm sure she had her many days of grief and struggle. She literally lived there at the temple day and night, just worshiping Father, that her soul was full. And she just sat there and continued to fast and pray and worship. And maybe we're in one of those seasons, right? Things have clipped right along. And man, our heart is full. And we're in anticipation of an amazing experience and encounter with God every single morning that we make up. Maybe, maybe life for us is more like Mary. And we sort of understand God's word and his command and we're willing to go be obedient. But honestly, we just kind of need to, to walk into the temple and say, Father, would you forgive me? Father, would you cleanse me? Father, would you purify me? May your grace, Father God, be sufficient to restore me back into a full and complete and righteous encounter and experience with you. I don't, I don't know whether you've ever had anything like Simeon experienced where the Holy Spirit was just so crystal clear. This is what I want you to do. This is what you're going to experience. I, I remember uh, I was sitting at a table in Orlando, Florida. We were hosting a conference and, and, and I have this question I ask when I go out to dinner and out to lunch with people many times, we'll ask the waiter or the waitress, hey, we're getting ready to pray for our meals or anything we can pray for you for. And, and this sweet little girl named Angela was our waitress and there's eight pastors sitting at a table at this conference in Orlando and, and so I asked the question, the guys just kind of roll their eyes. Yep. We knew Ken was going to ask that one. And, and she finishes our drink order and she says, Hey, are you guys Christians? And I said, yeah, we, we are. And she says, I think I'm a Christian. And then she sort of walked off to go get our drinks and she comes back and she's put them down on the table and she begins to take the orders. And I just felt the Holy spirit going, Ken, this is what you need to do. You need to, you need to ask her, you need to, you need to say something. And so she gets to me and she says, Hey, do you know what you want? And I said, Yes, ma'am, but you can't have my, my food order until I know that you know for certain whether or not you're a follower of Christ. She says, what do you mean? I said, hey, I'm okay if, if you choose to follow him and exchange your life with Jesus. I'm okay if you don't. What I can't live with, I can't walk out of here and have you walk out and go, hey, I think I am. So what do you think that means to you? And what was amazing was she began, she sets down. She begins to share. The guys at our table get up and start refilling tea and water in her section in this restaurant right there on International Drive in Orlando, Florida. And we, we walk her through what it means to know Jesus. And right there in the restaurant, she exchanges her life with Christ. She went home that day knowing whether or not she was a follower of Christ. There are moments like Simeon 
that we sense God going, hey, yes, the time is now. This is coming. I need to use you. And we take these big steps of faith. And one of the things that we want to do today is we want to ask you as a family, as you close out 2020 and walk into 2021, how is it that God can use you and your family? What is it in a, in a way like that, that we can fast and pray and prepare our hearts like Anna did and, and recognize we're going to fall short. We'll walk into the temple just like Mary did to be purified. But, but God, just like Simeon has said, hey, I am going to use my church and church's people. It's you and me. and I'm going to use us to change the world. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to leave you for the rest of your time with some questions, the exact same questions Abby had us look at a minute ago. Who, what, where, when, and why? That as a family, in the next few minutes, you're going to answer these questions. Who is the Holy Spirit leading you to pray for? To put on your heart that as a family, you could have some sort of strategic, intentional engagement with in 2021. Now, now we could all build a big list, but I'm going to ask you, would you just limit it to one? Would you talk through it as a family? Maybe it's a, a neighbor or a coworker or a single parent family or a couple in your neighborhood or an elderly couple that you've been meaning to get to know. Maybe it's a, a family at our kid's school or on our sports team. But, but for the sake of this exercise, would you, would you sort of talk it through and drill down to one family? Because here's what I know. If we put 20 on the list, it just gets overwhelming. So let's start with one. Would you, would you zero in on who is the one family that we could have intentional engagement with? The what? What is it that our family can do to serve them and to love them well? Maybe we take them to, to dinner. Maybe we invite them to our house for a meal. Maybe if it's an elderly person, we serve them in some capacity in terms of helping with their home or giving them a ride somewhere. Maybe it's a single parent family that we begin to provide dinner for once a week. I have no idea what your what is, but would you talk that through? Here's who God's leading us. Just like Simeon, there they are. He was waiting on the Messiah. You're going to be waiting on God to do a work with this family. This is what we think this is going to look like. Where is it going to happen? Where's our intentional engagement going to happen with them? Are we going to have dinner together or coffee together or game night or set the kids up to have a, a play date or go for a walk with them? I don't know what the encounter looks like, but where is it going to take place? And then when? When, when are we going to begin this intention. Let's put a date on the calendar. Something powerful happens when we etch it down and we say, okay, this is a family God's called us to. This is what that looks like and where we think it's going to take place. We can adjust if we need to. And this is when we're going to take action. Now, maybe as a family, we're like, man, this is a big stretch. So we're going to pray together for a week or two. But January 15th, we're making that call. February 1st, January 7th. I don't know what that looks like, but I'm telling you, when we can all be accountable, our kids are gonna ask us, hey, are we praying for that family? And today's the day. And we're gonna, we're gonna be encouraged to step out in faith. And most importantly is the why. Man, why is God placing that family on our heart? Do they need to be connected to the gospel story and the good news of Jesus? Do they need to be connected to a community that could just love them and envelop them with the overflow of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Why is God placing them in our path that we might respond in obedience, just like Mary and Joseph, and walk into 2021 with this anxious anticipation like Simeon had? We've been told by the Holy Spirit, this is coming. And God, we cannot wait to see what you do. And so for the rest of our time today, we're going to ask you who, what, where, when, and why. And would you as a family use this story from Luke chapter 2 just to born, to set an example and a model in the life of Mary and Joseph, Simeon and Anna, and lead that to become a personal story for our family of who, what, where, when, and why God's going to do something special in 2021. We'll see you next week, the first Sunday in January of 2021, kicking off a brand new series. We're so thankful and we love you guys. Have a blessed, blessed rest of 2020 and we'll see you soon.